Welcome back to First Take. If you're just joining us, Jerry Jones spoke on 105.3 The Fan and was defending Jason Garrett. It seems he's changed his tune a bit, saying this, I'm glad to have him. He's the guy for the job. In my opinion, Jason Garrett will be coaching in the NFL next year. Marcus Spears, former Cowboy, also with us now. And uh, Max, you had a question for Stephen A. before the break. Let's well, reiterate a, that and let's see. Stephen A. Know. heard that and went crazy and said, I'll paraphrase, that this drives black people nuts when they hear, wait, what has Jason Garrett done to to deserve a head coaching job. He's just automatically going to get another one in the NFL. There are only 32 jobs. And I brought up that the NFL has not faced the same kind of um, perception that the NBA did, which was it's a black league, too much so to appeal to middle America. Um, and partly I always felt that was because the two stars of every team are the coach and the quarterback. And for decades and decades, they were always almost exclusively white. And now we look at the quarterbacks, top five or so, or African-American. And I was wondering, Stephen A., if you felt this puts negative pressure uh, uh, or, or has a negative effect on African-American candidates for head coaching jobs, even if it's not conscious with the owners, even unconsciously, like, whoa, if both those slots are filled by African-Americans, we will be perceived as too black a league. I don't, and, and, and my response to that is, first of all, I appreciate the question. And secondly, and more importantly, I would disagree with you because I don't think the owners are thinking about the combination of a head coach and a quarterback. I think the quarterback is separate and apart. I think they look as players as players. You know what? You go out there, you perform, we pay you a salary, shut your mouth and play. That's what I think their mentality is for the most part. I do think, however, that they look at head coaches um, in terms of leadership, in terms of ability to galvanize the troops get folks to toe the line, per se, to be a face of the franchise, I do think that they look at them differently, and I think the proof is in the pudding. For example, Steve Wilkes goes into Arizona. He lasts one year. You didn't give this man a chance to be no damn head coach in the National Football League, but if you had let him go and you decided to hire somebody that had been in the league for many, many years and what have you, you would have a legitimate excuse. Did they do that? No. They hired Cliff Kingsbury, a guy out of Texas Tech, that was five games below 500. He was mediocre on the collegiate level, and he, ne he never was a coordinator on the NFL level or anything like that and automatically gets elevated to a head coaching job. A Freddie Kitchens in Cleveland, white dude, running backs coach to offensive coordinator to a head coaching position inside of 10 months. We got white folks in the National Football League that have been around for decades, and they never got an opportunity like this guy had. Matt LaFleur, nothing but respect for the job that he's doing in Green Bay, but he was the offensive coordinator for the 27th ranked Tennessee Titans. How are you 27 and you get a head coaching job? I think that wouldn't but, happen the, to an African-American. Excuse me. Oh, you're damn right it wouldn't happen for an African-American. And then we got a guy like a, a Mike Tomlin who's won 65% of his games, by the way. Okay? And we're talking about getting rid of him. But let's go a step further. It's 32 teams in the National Football League. Okay? It is 2019. How many black general managers do we have? One. One. That's Chris Grant in Miami, who, by the way, seems to be doing a hell of a job. Because it ain't like even though Miami stuck at the beginning of the season, Brian Flores is doing a hell of a job as an African-American coach. Oh, by the way, he traded dudes but got picks. And so you have a plan that's going to be executed in the future. But I'll tell you what makes it even more egregious, Marcus. Who is one of the premier executives in the history of the National Football League? Ozzie Newsom. Newsom. Ozzie Newsom. A black man exceptional, without question. Took Lamar he, Jackson listen, with the listen, last move he, he ever walk, made. He walks away from the game. Don't they tell us pedigree matters? Don't they use that as an excuse to, biz, to basically develop and proliferate a pipeline? Don't they say, excuse me, this guy here did this job, so as a result, we're going to pick up his ilk because his ilk has shown it could work. Did they do that? No, they have not. We still have a situation here. And then we got Jerry Jones, who I respect. I really, really like Jerry Jones. But for him to go on public radio and to sit up there and say in Dallas that Jason Garrett, he's my guy, he's the guy for this job, when just a week ago you were questioning it, and then on top of it all to try to promote him for another job in the future, I challenge anybody in America, in America, to look me in my face on national television in any kind of public platform and tell me the excuse 
for Jason Garrett to be a head coach in the National Football League if he loses this job in Dallas. Tell me what possible argument can be made on his behalf when you've been coaching 10 seasons. You in your 10th season, you only got two playoff victories. This is disgraceful. It really is. Well, Go ahead, Marcus. The Giants and Jets uh, exist, so maybe. And Adam the, Gates the, didn't deserve his job, and Pat Sherman didn't deserve the, his job. The, Damn straight. The, the conversation is poignant, and, and – this is what I love about being with you two guys because we have these type of conversations. Number one, it won't be right until it's not out of the ordinary for a black head coaching candidate to be normal. All right. Instead of it being the Rooney rule, I tell people this all the time. I have this conversation like we needed a civil rights act in order to have the same rights. We need a Rooney rule in order to we have to interview minority coaches. That whole in, intellectual and, and that thought process behind that has to be removed in order for this playing field to even be evened in the first place. Stephen A., you make great points. Mac, you, Max, you make great points. When I think about the NFL, I look at Anthony Lynn. I look at Anthony Lynn, who had the charges in contention last year. I look at Mike Tomlin, who had – who. Obviously, we know what Coach his track year, record maybe. is in Pittsburgh. And we look at Flores and the way that he has the Miami Dolphins plan. And I'll even go a step further with the minority of Ron Rivera in Carolina who took that team to a Super Bowl with an African-American quarterback in Cam Newton, right? So how long and, – and then you can go back. You can go back to Tony Dungy. You can go back to Lovey Smith in Chicago who ended up in the Super Bowl. Tony Dungy won a Super Bowl. Gruden came in and had Tony Jun Dungy's players, a roster that he had a mass, and they ended Ended up winning the Super Bowl as well. You think about all of that as a black player, as a black coach, as guys vouching and trying to get these jobs and have opportunities in this league. And Stephen A., to your point, it upsets you when you see a track record. We are not talking about uh, we, we are not talking about a relationship. We're not talking about how much Jerry Jones loves Jason Garrett. We're not talking about how much Jason Garrett has been a part of the league and how long he has been coaching. We are legitimately only talking about a track record here in Dallas with Jason Garrett when we compare it to all of the things that have transpired for African-American coaches. And when you think about it, it is disgraceful. When you hear Jerry Jones say that, it's almost like a slap in the face to a lot of these guys that are trying to get jobs. To your point, Stephen A., Steve Wilkes being in Arizona one season and, and being out. We look at Cincinnati. They made a hire, a young coordinator. Terrible this year. Nobody's talking about that. So, to that point, I 100% agree with what you're saying. Here's the problem with the situation in Dallas. Jerry has doubled down too much for Jason Garrett. He's given Jason Garrett outs. He's giving him excuses. And the reason why the Dallas Cowboys are in this position that they're in right now at 6-6 six and six with a roster that has been built in order to be Super Bowl contenders is because the owner has continued to make excuses for the head coach. We are not having this conversation if the Dallas Cowboys were winning. We are not mm -hmm. having this conversation if Jerry Jones didn't put all the money behind well, this football team. We are not having but, this conversation if they are not on paper one of the best teams in the NFL. The only thing you can point to is the coach, and it is disheartening for us to sit here and listen to you make excuses for Jason Garrett after uh -huh. 10 years, and they sitting here 6-6 six and six right now with arguably one of the best rosters in the NFL. Well, I want to let Max get in here because I know you got something to say, but I want to make this point, and I'm going to make people uncomfortable with what I'm about to say, but I'm just giving you facts, okay? There are no black owners in the National Football League. There are 31 white owners and Shad Khan, who is Pakistani, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, yep. in Jacksonville. There's no black executive VPs of football operations. The only GM is Chris Greer. One of the issues that I had, Max, with whole, the whole Colin Kaepernick tryout fia fiasco was that there were a plethora of African Americans in the pipeline to potentially become GMs that were in attendance for the workout. And even though we can question what the owners were thinking and what their objectives were, those dudes had showed up ready to fight on behalf of him and Jay-Z was behind the scenes fighting on behalf of him because he's trying to get in that ownership pipeline. So it's it's his his Kaepernick's plan is grand and it's to be applauded to some degree. But there are other people who have a plan 
and it speaks to what his agenda is. And it speaks to the very kind of thing that we're talking about here. Because in a roundabout way, what we're lamenting right now is the kind of thing Colin Kaepernick has lamented too. And it's also, you bring up pipeline. We've heard Bill Polian talk about the Rooney Rule on this show a couple of years ago, how you need candidates in the pipeline. But Stephen A., you're also saying the pipeline is circumvented or at least, or at least um, short-circuited or there are shortcuts for white candidates. And I agree. even yes, it there, is there is a soft kind of... It's not racism, kind of racial prism through which people see things, whether they realize it or not. What was suddenly in vogue in the National Football League? It was offensive brilliance, right? Like the air raid offense and all that stuff was working its way in the league. And someone like McVeigh, someone like that. And so that started getting fast tracked. Now, why does that help disproportionately uh, white candidates? Because, and here's where it gets kind of like soft racial views, there's this sense that that's sophisticated. Right, that, that that requires some kind of intellectual capacity, and we all know racist stereotypes always went against black people that way. In addition, where do you find those offensive types from? They're former offensive coordinators, quarterbacks coaches. A lot of those guys were former quarterbacks, and black people were dissuaded. You know, candidates that should have been quarterbacks were dissuaded and, in fact, basically prohibited from becoming quarterbacks for decades and decades and decades. Look at Warren Moon. Look what they were saying about Lamar Jackson. So, so that all has to be taken into consideration. But the bottom line is, if a league is three quarters, one ethnic group or yeah. ethnic minority, you would expect that to be at least somewhat reflected mm -hmm. in coaching staffs, and it is exactly the opposite. Yep, I appreciate the dialogue. Yeah. Obviously, a huge story, and us uh, reacting to what Jerry Jones said about Jason Garrett kind of changing his tune. We'll have much more on this in the coming days. Marcus is sticking around, but we got to get to some other stuff, guys, and pay some bills. It's oh, official. Fight for somebody, fight for somebody. Tom Brady Garrett. will not get his top weapon back this season, but find out why all is not lost for Brady without Gronk. And King James has the Lake Show at the top of the wild, wild west. But are the purple and gold even the best in their own building? More first take after this quick break.